Hello, it's Kariha. So today I prepared a comprehensive guide on how to make hair in VWrite Studio. This video will be split into two sections, namely basics and advanced. So in basics, I'll go through every single tool in the hair section of VWrite Studio. And I'll also give some tips on how to better utilize these tools. And any more complicated tips will be included in the advanced section. So for advanced tips, I'll also be including a general guide on how to use hair in VR Studio to make different accessories for your character, such as you know hats and piercings. So for people who don't know how to make hair from scratch, you will definitely have to watch from basics. But if you already have a general idea on how to do it, but you just want more specific tips to help your hair look better, then you can consider skipping to advance. But I'll say I will include quite useful tips in basics as well. So if you are quite patient, then you can watch through it as well. There will be time spans, time spans, time time stamps provided. So yeah, let's go. Starting from under hairstyle, the hair is split into many different parts and I will generally recommend you to do your hair split into these parts as well because if you did your entire hair in one part, say the front, you might have a hard time when you are doing the bones for your hair because if you have many many layers, it gets quite chaotic. We will start by creating a custom hairstyle, going into edit hairstyle. And now I will be explaining every single tool here and on the side as well. To start creating hair, you need your hair guides. So there are freehand hair guides and procedural hair guides. In freehand hair guides, there is basically nothing, it's a blank mesh. And for procedural hair guides, it comes with these hair strands already on the hair guides. And what you can do when you use procedural hair guides is that you can edit this entire hair strands together so if you scroll down on the right to your procedural parameters this is something that is only available in procedural hair guides and it's not available for freehand groups so you can adjust say the position of all these strands together this is really helpful for uniform looking hair say the back of your hair where everything is about the same yeah you can adjust the interval the hairline, how many strands of hair you need. Yeah, so over here there's a lot of things you can do, and I would say it's something that you need to experiment with yourself to understand. You see, there's really interesting things that you can do, you can control. Yeah. Oh, and the thing is, you can use procedural hair groups and also convert it into a freehand hair guide later if you need it to be. See, um, you can just right click here and click convert to freehand and now it's a freehand guide you can see from below the title that is like it will say whether it's a freehand or a procedural hair guide but the thing is once you have converted it into a freehand guide you can't convert it back to procedural so take note of that next I'll start explaining the tools that you have on your 3d preview surface so from the left, we can see that, that under your selection, there is Move, Rotate, and Resize. This applies to your mesh, so you can move the mesh around. You can also rotate it and resize it. So when you resize, like say you want your hair mesh to be really small, like you're making a tiny hair bun, don't forget to also resize from this direction. You can resize it this way, move it around to your, say I want a bun on the side of her head, you can do this. Oh and this is also a good time to be using your procedural hair group because you can easily make a tiny hair bun by adding more hair count, increasing say the interval. You can also increase the weave of each individual hair strand together. So now you have a hair bun here. You should increase more hair curl. The interval. Yeah, you get what I mean. <laughs> yes. 
So this is what you can use this tool for. It's really really useful and something that I use a lot. And next to your selection that is a brush. The brush is how you draw new hair strands. So now I'm on the freehand group and how you draw a new hair strand is basically yeah. I'm sure you know how to do this. And next to the brush, there is the retouch brush. The retouch hair brush is used on individual hair strands. So you have to select the hair strand that you want to work on first. Say this hair strand and then the retouch brush. It basically retouches the path of the hair. So maybe you don't like how you drew this hair strand. You can adjust it using the retouch brush. But it is quite clunky to use, I would say, because you can't really see anything when you're working on it. You can make the hair longer or shorter. Okay, but honestly, I just don't think this is a very good brush to be using. I think if you want to adjust the path of the hair, it's just better to use the tool right next to it, which is called the control point. So in control point, you'll see these little dots you can basically adjust how you want the hair to look here instead. I, I've always used this and I've never used the retouch brush actually. Yeah, I think it's just more convenient and easier to use. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Now I'll talk about the tool on the right side. It is a mirror tool. If you click it on, everything you do now will be mirrored on the opposite side. So say you are changing the hair mesh, so once you move it on say the left side, it will be mirrored on the right side. This also goes the same for the front and back, like that. Normally I wouldn't actually mirror the front and back because the head isn't the same on the front and the back. So it is more likely that you use the mirror tool for the sides of the mesh instead. This mirror tool also works when you are doing up new hair strands. So say you use the brush and you draw a new hair strand on this side, it will be mirrored on the other side. You can also adjust the hair strands using the control point, the mirror hair strands, like that. See. You see that it is mirrored on the other side. The changes are so if you forget to turn on the mirror tool and you only have the hair done, the hair strand down on one side. So let me delete this. So now you only have this hair strand on this side and you want it to be mirrored on the other side. What you can do here is that you can right click the hair strand, duplicate the hair strand and then you flip it. So now it's here as well. But the thing is, when you do it this way and you adjust the hair strand now again using the control points, it wouldn't be mirrored on the other side. Next, I'll explain the material and texture parameters. So for material, if you click the drop down, you can see main color, highlight color, outline color, and shader color. So the material is basically your texture for the hair. So if you edit texture, you can see this is the hair texture that is currently applied and over here I will write A, B, C Okay, so why did I do this? I will show you now This is to help explain the texture parameters So when you see the width, it means how wide the texture is so if I increase the weave, you can see that A is becoming wider, right? But what if I don't want to see the A and I want to see the B, I will adjust the offset instead. And I'll shift it over to where the B is. And for highlight position, you can change where your highlight is, whether it's higher or lower. These adjustments will apply to every single hair strand on the head that is using the same material. So let's say if you want to only adjust, you want the adjustment to be only made to this hair strand, 
and not this hair strand, then they have to be on different material. Okay. Moving on to hair parameters. So from the first position X, you can shift your hair strands around like that. And for Y, it will be up and down. For the weave ratio, it will be how wide the hair strands are. By the way, you can also adjust it individually instead of as a group. So like that, say I'll adjust this one and yeah, the weave. And for thickness, you'll have to see it from the cross section like that. So now it is quite thin. If I increase the thickness, can you tell? Sorry, it looks kind of weird here because of the shading. But yeah, this is thin and this is thick. And for twist intensity, if you turn it on, you can start twisting the hair, so if you are doing curls Like drills Yeah Quite cool <laughs> You can also adjust the placement of this twist The curls So if you want it to be lower or higher You can push it down or up And the smoothness This is very rough <laughs> And this is very smooth Okay, for the cross section, there is diamond triangle, bottomless triangle, flat, and yeah, the beta stuff. So now all these are drew in tri um in diamond. Let me edit the shading first. It's kind of and the look, the rim light. Yes, the rim light. Okay, the reason why the hair looks kind of weird on the cross section now is because of the rim light this white color star so I'm just gonna turn it off okay, so you can see clearer and so let's go back and edit yeah let me show you the weave again this time you can see clearer the weave changes okay so I was at okay cross section so right now all these strands have a diamond cross section and I'll show you the other types I will make a new hair mesh to explain the cross section so let's hide these hair meshes first I'll make a new one okay so I will draw a strand in each of these um, available cross section so the first one in diamond and the next one in triangle bottomless triangle and flat okay from the surface you can't really tell the difference except for the flat one let me rename all of this hair first To better see the cross section, we'll be increasing the thickness of all these strands and we'll also make these strands into a blunt cut Okay, so from here it's pretty obvious now you can see the diamond shape the triangle shape the bottomless triangle and the flat one Usually I'll be using diamond shapes and there are situations where a flat shape is very desirable It depends on the kind of look you are going for But anyway, um, from the cross section you can tell that for flat it's basically like really flat You can't even increase the thickness When I increase the thickness of these strands, only the first three actually had any changes But for the flat one, it remained the same Like that yeah, so this is what the cross section does. So earlier you saw that I adjusted the curve here on the right to get the blank, the blank cut look. So now I'll explain what this curve does. Uh, we'll use a new hair guide to show you. Okay, we'll get back to this one and we'll use this strand. So basically this 
the first dot here, this first point, is the starting of the hair strand. And the last point is the ending of the hair strand. So you can adjust the width of the hair strands using these points, like that. So let's say you want to make a really, really white strand of hair and you increase the width to the max and it's still not white enough for what you need, you can actually increase from the curve itself, like that. And if it's still not white enough for you, uh, one tip I would say is actually this param parameters, you can key in the numbers yourself and you can go beyond the, the max of the sliders. So now the maximum of the sliders is 0, 0 0.1, you can actually key, key in whatever number like 1. Yeah, and you get this ultra white strand of hair. <laughs> or you just need it to be 0 0.2, just double the size of the previous maximum. It'll look like that. Yes. So, yeah, so this curve adjusts the width of the hair in sections. So, let's say you want this part to protrude out. You can actually add more points to the curve by holding on the curve. So if I hold here, there's a new point created. And now I can do this. I can protrude the hair out in a weird way. So this is how you use this curve. And for the selection box here, it's basically just a quick selection for different haircut. This is fluffy and this is straight. The straight is not normally ends in a blunt cut and I'll say this is the kind of cut you want if you are making bangs for your model, yeah. Lastly in basics will be the guide parameters. Guide par 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 parameters is for the guides, the mesh itself. So say you want to make really long hair that goes like down below her butt. <laughs> You can adjust the height of the guide here, all the way down, like that. Or you want to make short hair and you don't need a mesh this long, you can make it shorter as well. Just take note that if you are adjusting it when you already have your hair done, like the strands are already on the mesh, it will actually affect the strands itself. Yeah. And you can also offset the mesh like that. This will be really far away from the head if you need it closer to the head. And for fit the head Z, you can see it from the side like that. And fit to head X. Yeah. So this is pretty much it for the basics. I basically went through all the tools here that you can use. Okay, so moving on to hair bones, I will now choose a preset to use as example. Hair bones can be found under the hair bounds. And what this does is that it, con it, controls the <laughs> it controls the motion of your hair and how it looks. When you select a preset from V-Ride Studio, the bones are already done, so it looks like that. They are split into sections. And I'll first explain to you what these um, tools on the right side mean before I show you how to make these bones manually for your customized hair. So for the very first option, bones. This is the number of bones in the strand of hair. So you can increase it or you can decrease it. When you have a lot of these bones, your hair might move kind of weirdly. So what these bones does is that it kind of splits your hair into these sections for the parts that move. So if you have this many bones on this strand of hair, your bones, sorry, your hair will start moving separately like this. This part of the hair will move according to this one bone here. The other part will be to this bone, the second bone. Yeah. So normally I wouldn't recommend having so many bones for like such a short strand of hair. So two is enough like that. And for a fixed point, 
it is um, at which point your hair is fixed and does not move. So right now, where your bones are, this, this is where the hair will move and anything above that will be fixed so it wouldn't move. And if you shift it all the way up like that, your fixed point is only at this near the roots of the hair. This will make your hair look really funny because the hair starts moving from here and you might see your scalp. So normally you wouldn't want your fixed point to be so high up. So let's shift it back down. And for stiffness, it is how stiff your hair is. So if the stiffness is very low, your hair will flow, it will move a lot. Yeah. To check the stiffness, you will have to close your boning window and go back to camera and put your model in animation to see it. I'll show you in a while. And for gravity is um, how much gravity affects your hair strand. So you also need to go to the camera to see how it looks. Okay, so for gravity, you will most likely see the effect of it when you use wind. So you can set it in camera as well to check. And heat radius is how big these bones are. So you see, you can increase it to this really huge size. But when you have such a huge bone, it will collide with the neighboring bones and your hair might move kind of weirdly. So take note of that and just keep it on a lower end to be safe. Yeah. Okay, now we'll move on to camera to see exactly how this hair flows. So you have to close your bone, your hair bounce window. Override, save it. Go to camera on the right side. Okay, so in camera, you can go to poses and animation and put the model into an animation, say walking. Now you can see how the hair moves. Sometimes the hair might look alright, like it will look quite normal when the model is walking, but it might look weird when the model is making bigger motions. So it's better to choose other animations to try out as well. Like that. Do you see this one strand of hair that is moving a lot more than the other strands? Because that is the strand that I was tweaking earlier to show you, so it has different par parameters than the default one. And you can also set wind here, like that. Yes, you set wind. Normally, you set the wind to check the gra gravity. Yeah, how much gravity affects the hair. So you see here. <laughs> this is why I say the fixed point has to be lower. If not, you will be seeing the forehead of your model and it looks really strange. Now we'll go back to hair bounce, so I can show you how to add the bones manually to add the bones manually i will now delete the, all these hair groups the bone groups so we can redo it manually okay so when you have your own customized hair you come in and see all the hair are ungrouped and it will look like that depending on the mesh so all the hair in one mesh will be in one group like that but you don't have to group them as one bone group and the reason why you don't group them as one group is because if you do so if you click if you click create bone group this entire chunk of hair will now move together in one direction like according to this one bone group this one bone here and it will look kind of how do i say um It'll look weird basically because it'll be one whole chunk of hair. It doesn't look like separate strands of hair. Yeah. So it is better to let me undo it. Okay, to start grouping the hair, it is better to group maybe like this about this size together. So you shouldn't have too many strands in one group. So basically just the strands that are close enough together so they move they can move together and not look strange. And so once you have selected the hair, you can click create bone group. There's also the option to use the auto generation for bone groups. And I guess it is a good option if you are not very clear on how to generate your own bone groups yet. So you can just basically adjust how many you want and click auto generate bone group. And it looks like this. It should most definitely work fine, but you need you still need to tweak the number of bones, the fixed points and stuff 
by yourself. This is good if yeah, you are just starting to do this thing and you, you are still learning how to create individual bone groups. But if you are more advanced already, I'll still recommend you to do it yourself manually. And to show you more about this fixed point stiffness and gravity, I'll move to the back of the hair. And okay, let's use this one, this bone group. I'm going to add a lot of bones, like that. This one will have the default number of bone groups. The next one here will have one bone. Okay, and then we'll hit the camera and I'll show you the difference. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so this <laughs> this chunk of hair here has the most number of bone groups. And this is why I say it will look weird because you have too many bones and your hair starts moving really crazily. Like yeah. And if I turn off the wind, yeah, even if the wind is turned off, it still moves a lot, even though your model is making very minimal movements. Like, say, if your model is just walking, it will still move like crazy. So, this is why you shouldn't have too many bones, or they will all start colliding with each other and creating a really weird movement. And I'll also show you the gravity now. Mm. Okay, let's make it normal again. <laughs> okay, and... Okay, for this one, I'll increase the gravity to the max. And we can compare these two chunks. Okay, it, it already looks weird. <laughs> when the model is just walking and there's no wind. <laughs> And if there's wind, do you see? Because the gravity is set so high for this chunk of hair, it is kind of not being really affected by the wind now. And it's so rooted to the gravity that it's not moving and it's just clipping into things. So yeah, you shouldn't set your gravity that high. <laughs> and I think that's it for our basics in hairstyle and hair bounce. So we can move on to advanced now. So earlier in basics, I actually split the hair texture into three parts, A, B and C. And now I'll show you how you can actually use this texture splitting for a better use than previous. So from here, you can split the texture into three parts. Say if you want the highlight of the hair to look different, you can do something like this. Say the hair, the highlight for the middle will look like that. And you want it to be something like progressively shorter highlights like that. Okay, I know it looks very ugly now, but <laughs> this is just to show you say the center strand we have offset. We have this giant highlight here. This you can set it to the highlight on the side. Yeah, so you can do something like that. This is how you can use the texture parameters. And of course, there are a lot more ways you can use this for. So, uh, something that you just have to be experimental with. So say you want to have different looking texture for each strand, you can then split these strands like say you want to have shadow here. Yeah. But you don't want it on this strand, you can just click on this strand and change the texture offset like that. So that the shadow is only over here. So this is how you can split the texture and use it for different strands of hair. Okay, next I'll talk about how to use these textures to make accessories. So starting with a simple one, I'll go with hair clips. 
This is a pair of hair clips that I created for my client's commission. Her model has these two different colored hair clips. So how you can use this is now the hair clips under this material. I'll change the colors just so we we know it's different. Okay, so this material here. So say I want the hair clip to be on this side. For accessories, you have to remember that for a cross section, you have to use flat. And for the curve, it has to be flat as well. I'll show you why it has to be flat. So if it's fluffy now, it'll look like that. Okay, wait, not me, right? Like that. Yeah, so the hair clip isn't straight and has like really weird looking zigzags. So you have to adjust the curve to be completely flat like that. Like that. Yeah. So now it is a hair clip and you can make it smaller and if I don't want to see this color I want to use the other color I just need to change the offset of the texture or if I want to use both I can just adjust like that together yeah you can make the hair clip straighter using the control points like that or if I want to use say piercings if I want to make a piercing okay maybe not on this hair mesh it looks kind of weird I'll make a new hair mesh for piercings you have to make your hair mesh go nearer to your ear like that okay this is just a quick example piercings I will turn off this hair clip okay this is a piercing that I have made in the past for my other models and so you can see there are two types and once again the cross section has to be flat the curve as well okay, okay. brush okay see the the earrings are not in the correct direction right now Oh yeah, because I made it for the other side. <laughs> it, uh, okay, it should go on this side. Like that. And from here, you can adjust how it's supposed to look using the control points. It's a little too wide right now. Yeah, and so basically this is how it works. You just need to mess around with the control points. Yeah. Or if you want to make something like wings. I'll go back to this weird looking mesh. I prepared the wings texture from my previous model. This. So for wings, you have to make um, two directions, one for the left, one for the right side. And again, flat cross section and flat curve. Oh wait, I should just mirror it like that. Okay, it looks weird now, but you just have to adjust the offset. Individually. I think the shape looks weird now, but you just have to adjust it to your liking. So it looks like that. And you can push it backwards. You can adjust the mesh. And yeah, this is basically how Wings works in V-Ride. And for any other accessories, they are basically the same um, logic, they are made by the same logic you just have to play around more to understand how to use these textures more efficiently yeah. for other accessories that are not flat say um, a horn if you have a horn, you need to create a hair mesh and create the shape say I want a horn that goes upwards you have to rotate your hair mesh there's a lot of experimenting around for this kind of thing 
need to play around with your hair mesh and also for this your cross section should be diamond and it looks kind of flat right now so for horns your horns should be quite thick so you should increase the thickness maybe beyond beyond the sliders and okay it looks kind of weird now because it's using the hair texture so say if we just make it a uh, and you just have to adjust say you want the base to be thicker normally the base is a lot thicker you can adjust the shape of the horn like that and the mesh as well to set the shape this is how you create different add-ons on your VRM model they are mostly made by hair so something like that yeah, you can just play around with the parameters so I think that's it for accessories in VRM Studio because there's so many accessories I can't possibly really cover everything but they're all made by this same principle of playing around with the texture and meshes so yeah this is it for the VRAT hair tutorial video and thank you for watching till the end. If you have any more questions, you can leave it down in the comments below and I'll try my best to help you. And also thank you to all those who voted in my hairstyle poll because I really really like this new hairstyle. And if you would like to see more VRAT content, you can like and subscribe for more. See you and bye!